lives inside of us. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Grab your Bibles with me this morning and turn with me into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First, uh, First Thessalonians, excuse me, chapter 5. We're going to read verses 8 to verse 10. If you will, stand with me yeah. in reverence to God's Word. The title of the message this morning is Living Together with Him. Yeah. Living Together with Him. Verse 8 says, But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Amen. Lord, we thank You that whether we wake or sleep, whether we're alive on this earth or we have passed, Lord, that we are together with You. Amen. For You do live in our hearts. Amen. Lord, that You uh, are to live within us, as, Lord, others may see you, and, Lord, in our lives, Lord, for the life that we now live, we live by the faith of the Son of God, Amen. who gave his life for us. Lord, we just pray that you would help us to separate ourselves so that we might walk in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. We give you honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. Yeah. Whether it's in the, on this earth, and we know in the next, amen, yeah. that we are going to live together with Him. But I think for some time, uh, sometimes we as Christians, we forget that we are living together with Christ yeah. here and now. Yeah. Amen. amen. We, we look and we hope for that time that we will live together with Him in that new heaven and that new earth. But we forget that we are supposed to live together with Him now. Amen. Amen. That we belong to Him now. And I've said this uh, before and it's so true that many people want to date Christ. They want to date Him. They want to spend an hour or two with Him a week and that's it. But we are to live together with Him. Amen. We are to live with Jesus Christ. We are to be married to Jesus Christ in our Amen. life. To have that daily fellowship and relationship with Him. And so, that is why the Bible says that we are of the day. Amen. We are of the day because why? Jesus is the light Amen. that lighteth the whole world. Amen. Jesus is that light that has been put into our lives, into our hearts. And we are of the day, as it says in verse 8. But let us, who is us? Us who have received Jesus Christ as our personal yeah. Savior. Just as John uh, 1 verse 12 says, To as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become yeah. the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name. Amen. So that is the us that He is talking about there, is those who have believed on the name of Jesus Christ. So, but let us, who are of the day, be sober. Amen. We need to be sober. We need to have our minds in the right place. To have a sober mind. To understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Yeah. To have our lives as it becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. To understand what we're here to do in this life. Yeah. Yeah. Are we here to, to gather up treasure on this earth? Are we here to gather up goods? Are we here to just live uh, as the Word of God says, eat, drink, and be married, for tomorrow you shall die? Right. Is that what our lives are about? No, it is not. Our lives is to be as what Brother Damon spoke about this morning in our devotion, and that is to be ministers of reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah. Ambassadors. 
ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Amen. Why? Because we are in His stead Amen. here on this earth. And look at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13 and verses 11 through 14. It says in verse 11, And that knowing the time. Amen. We need to know the times that we live in, right? Amen. We need to be aware. We need to be sober-minded, having an understanding that we are ever drawing closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Amen. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Amen. Amen. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Amen. Let us walk honestly as in the day. We have nothing to hide. Amen. In fact, we want our lives to be an example. Amen. I talked about this morning in Sunday school class that people are watching you because you say you're a Christian. Amen. And they are watching you and seeing what you do. And when you mess up and do things that you shouldn't, and they're going to point the finger at you and say, you're right. supposed to be a Christian. Yeah. And I said this morning in Sunday school class, we might say, well, that's unfair, brother. That's unfair that we should be, uh, uh, you know, really picked apart like that, that our lives should be an open uh, 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 window for everyone to see. But no, that's what God made us for. Yes. Amen. Amen. God made us to be an open window for the world to see Jesus living in our house. Amen. Amen. This earthly house that we have, and, and Brother Damon preached uh, this morning our devotion in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and he talks about if we... Uh, uh, know if we leave this earthly house, we have a house made yeah. of God in the heavens. Yeah. That new body that we have. But just because we have a new body doesn't mean that we can't live for God in this body. Yeah. And that we need to understand that we have been called to be an example. We have yeah. been called to be witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. And so it is not unfair for people to pick apart our lives. They should pick apart our lives yeah. because our lives should be an example to them of the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so let's go on. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Nothing to hide. Amen. Yeah. Having a life that everyone can see. Yeah. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. You know what we need to make provision for? The Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. We need to make provision for the Holy Spirit to move us in our lives to where God wants us to be. Yeah. So that God Himself can show Himself to others through our lives. And so we're going to do that by walking in the day, being sober, having a mindset that we understand what is at cost. Amen? Man. What is at cost? And that is the souls of men. We need to understand that. That is the balance that is in play. Okay? That is the prize that is to be won is the souls of men. And Satan is doing everything he can in this world to blind the minds of people so that he can cause as many people as he can to go to hell. Mm -hmm. That is his plan. That is his goal. <coughs> his goal is to cause as many people to uh, fall away from the truth as he can. And you know what our goal is? should be the goal of God. Yep. And that is to bring many, as many to Jesus Christ as possible. Amen. Amen. To be a witness. Because God sent forth His Son. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God sent forth His Son to be born of a virgin, to Amen. live a sinless life, to die on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Mm -hmm. And that all who believe in Him should not perish, Amen. but have everlasting Amen. life. 
Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 8 through 14 it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Yeah. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Amen. Amen. Christ is the only one who can give us light. And that light is in the Word of God. Amen. That Word is, in the, is, is the truth of God that He has given to all men that we might know Him and the power of His resurrection. Yeah. That we might walk in truth. That we might walk in the ways of life and not in the ways of death. Because there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the ways thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. And so men will go in the way that they think is right. And many people believe in the way that they feel is right. But I'm going to tell you what, if you base your faith on your feelings, you are going to be wrong. Amen. Because your feelings will lead you away from God, not to God. Amen? Yep. Your feelings, the Bible says, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And many people say, well, I believe this because I feel that this is right. But our feelings are the problem. Amen? Amen. And we need to understand that our faith is not based on what we feel. It is based on hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. That it is the Word of God that is the foundation for our faith. Amen. And that we need to stand on the Word of God right. to walk in the light as we are the children of the light. And therefore, that fruit of the Spirit will come out of our lives when we are walking in the light. Amen. Look at 1 John chapter 1. First John chapter 1 and verses 5 through 10, it says... For then is the mess for or excuse me, this then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins Amen. and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His Word is not in us. Yeah. We see this morning that God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. Amen. There is no darkness in God. I like that little, uh, it's kind of a science test that they use, that they light a match. And they use a, a bright light to shine on that match against the wall. And you can see the shadow of the match in the person's hand. But you cannot see the shadow of the light. Because in light, there is no shadow. Amen. <laughs> in fact, the Bible says that the light, it divides 
the darkness. Yeah. And God is going to divide the darkness. And we need to understand that the light that we have, that He has given to us, is His Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that if we walk in the truth, it is going to be in the truth of God's Word. Yeah. The next thing, not only having a sober mind, being uh, sober minded, but putting on the breastplate of faith and love, yeah. and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Amen. 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 We need that breastplate of faith and love. Amen. I talked about this morning that faith works by love. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because knowledge puffs up. But faith, or but love, but charity is the key. Amen? Mm -hmm. Charity is what uh, God uses to edify. And so we can have knowledge. We can have the knowledge of the Scripture. In fact, you go over and read for, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He talks about speaking with the tongues of angels. Mm -hmm. And if He gives all of His goods to the poor and all these different good things that He can do, it, and if He doesn't have charity... He's nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Because faith works by love. And our love for God and our love for each other will drive us to do what is right. And to live righteously before God. Yeah. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 10 through 17 it says Let, Let's go back to verse 4 I know this is a lot of reading but it is so good Amen. and it's more important for you to hear the word of God than it is to hear me for, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let's start in verse 4. It says, But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, yeah. in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes and imprisonments, in tumults and labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness. By the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, yeah. by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, yeah. as unknown and yet well known. As dying, and behold, we live. As chastened, and not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. Yeah. As having nothing, and yet possessing all things. Yeah. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is opened unto you, our heart is enlarged. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement? hath the temple of God with idols. For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons, and daughters, saith the Lord, God Almighty. Amen. You see, being uh, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, it's going to happen when we love. Mm -hmm. 
When we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, guess what? We're going to separate ourselves from the things of the world. And we are going to live in a way that shows God is number one in our right. life. And we're going to do that in whatever state we find ourselves in. In much patience, afflictions, necessities, distresses, and strife, imprisonments, in tumults, labors, watchings, fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and fame. Yeah. Approving ourselves as the ministers of God. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. In verses 10 through 17 it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. <coughs> Having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love, as he said, and, and a, as for a helmet, the hope of salvation. And here he talks even more about the armor that we are to wear, that we are to put on. He talks about having your loins girt about with truth. You see, your loins is where your core strength comes from. I know all you guys that work out, you, you, you know about that core strength. And all the different sit-ups and crunches and all that kind of stuff you do to get that core strength. Why? Because from this, from your loin comes you, the strength of your whole body. If you do not have a loin that is strong, then you're not going to be strong anywhere. Yeah, I mean, you can have the biggest arms in the world, but if you don't have a core that's strong, you're not going to be able to lift very much. You might be able to bench press, when it comes to lifting, it's not going to happen, okay? You have to have a core that is strong. And they said, gird about you. True. You see, they used to wear strong belts. Back in the, uh, uh, back in the, I mean, we're back coming up on the Summer Olympics, but the Olympics have been around for hundreds and thousands of years. Back then, those wrestlers, they had those strong belts that they put on. And many men have them today, men who lift for a living. Uh, probably Damon used to wear them when he worked for Sears and had lift all those uh, refrigerators and stuff. Why? Because that belt gave you uh, help in your core area when you had to lift and when you had to do the strong things. And that truth that is to be girded around us is the Word of God. Because why? The Word of God is our strength. Amen. Amen. The Word of God is what's going to give us the strength to live for God. And without that truth, we are weak and we know nothing. If we are going to live for God, we're going to have to do it by the truth of God's Word, having it girt about us, about our loins, having on the breastplate of righteousness, that which covers our uh, major organs, our heart, our lungs. And all those things. Because it's the breastplate of righteousness. And where do we get our righteousness? <coughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. And Jesus Christ is what is going to protect our heart. Amen. If we keep our heart in Him. Amen. The Bible says to uh, uh, guard. Is that the right word? To keep your heart. For out of it are the issues of life. Yeah. To keep your heart with all diligence, it says. And then he says, as he goes on, 
having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, always being ready to give the gospel. Amen. Always being ready to preach the word. Amen. And above all, taking the shield of faith. I tell you what, we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. And that faith is going to protect you from whatever, whatever the wicked may throw at you. Those fiery darts that they throw at you to cause you to stumble. Just have your faith in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. And the helmet of salvation. You know what? A lot of people in uh, churches all over the place, the biggest thing they struggle with is their own salvation. You know what? If it was up to us, then we would have a hope so salvation. Yeah. If it was based on what we do, then we would have to, at the end of our life, say, I hope that I've done enough good to get into heaven. I hope I've lived a good enough life. I hope the things, the good things that I've done outweigh the bad things that I've done. You know what? That's a shaky ground to stand on, isn't it? And there's people who believe that, well, if I messed up, well, I lost my salvation. The Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches that Jesus has saved us to the uttermost. Yeah, right. Amen? Mm -hmm. To the uttermost. He has saved us eternally yeah. at the moment of our belief in Him. And so the helmet of salvation is knowing that I am in Christ and He is in the Father. And no man can pluck us out. Amen? Amen. No man can take us out. Satan can't take the, away our salvation. And we can't lose our salvation because we did not work for our salvation. Amen? Jesus Christ paid the cost on the cross for our salvation. Amen. And it is those who have placed their faith in Him that are saved. And when you're saved, you are saved to the uttermost. Yeah. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is our weapon right here. Amen. Yeah. This is the weapon. I'm going to tell you what, if you want to be able to convince the gainsayers, if you want to be able to give an answer to every man, if you want to be able to stand up on the truth of God's Word and not back down, then you need to know this right Amen. here. Get this right here and put it in your heart because this is the sword of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yep. Look at 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4 and verses 4 through 11 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Yeah. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, yeah. that we might live through Him. How are we supposed to live? Through Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for yeah. our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We need to love one another and to remember that greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. Amen. And to understand this also, that God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, we are to live together with Him. Whether we wake, meaning whether we're alive, or whether we sleep, meaning whether we're dead. We're gonna we ought to live with him. Yes. We're gonna live with him. 
and to understand that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He has given us everything, every tool, every opportunity we need to live for Him. We just have to seize it, amen, yeah. to lay hold upon eternal life, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, amen, to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, amen. Yeah. We need to understand that we need to redeem the time for the days are evil, yeah. to be sober-minded and understand because God has not appointed us to wrath, we, He has appointed us to victory in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We just need to follow Him. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. Just like the children of Israel in the promised land. Do you think God had appointed them to fail? No. He told them to go and claim it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> He was going to give those Canaanites into their hands. Mm -hmm. You know what? It was their fear that caused them to doubt. Yeah. And they said, oh man, there's giants in the land. Mm -hmm. We're like grasshoppers. God didn't appoint them to fail. He said, I want you to go there and I'm going to give you the victory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they wouldn't believe, would they? They wouldn't accept His promise. And then had to roam around the desert for in the wilderness for 40 years. Now that was their own fault. Yep. because Not because God had appointed them to roam around the desert for 40 years, but because they wouldn't believe God. Yep. Now, I'm going to tell you what, God has not appointed you to wrath. But let me tell you, if you do not believe and walk by faith, then you are putting yourself into wrath. Amen. And into failure. Yeah. Because faith is the victory Amen. that overcometh the world. Amen? Yeah. Faith is the victory. Yeah. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. In verses 9 and 10 it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, yeah. and holy nation, a peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yeah. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Yeah. You see, we are called to be the people of God. Yeah. We are children of the King of Kings. Yeah. Amen. And Lord of Lords. I tell you what, what of, to, of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. Amen. God is my Father. Yeah. He has brought me into His dear kingdom. And He's brought me out of darkness into His marvelous light. Yeah. So that I might be a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. Yeah. Look at 2 Thessalonians. Why? Because He's not appointed us to wrath, yeah. but to obtain salvation. Amen. He has called us to be a peculiar people, a holy nation, a royal priesthood. Amen. He doesn't want us living in defeat. He wants us living in the victory in Jesus Christ. Yeah. We sing the song. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming love. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love, love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We sing that song, but do we really believe it? He plunged me to victory. Amen. He has bought me by the blood of Jesus Christ. And He's given to me everything I need to complete what He has started that He is going to do in me. Because all I have to do is humble myself and say, Lord, here am I. And the victory is mine. Amen. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13 through 15 says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, yeah. whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Yeah. Amen. Because God had chosen us from the very beginning to salvation through sanctification of the Holy Spirit. That means we were set apart by the Holy Spirit of God because of the belief that we have of the truth. Yep. And therefore, He has called us by the gospel and to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Therefore, stand fast. Amen? Stand fast. Put on the armor of God. Be sober-minded. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. And redeem the time. Amen. Yeah. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And if you'll stand with me as we read. You see, we have the victory in this life. Yeah. Because Jesus overcame the world. Yeah. And because Jesus overcame death and the grave, we have the victory in Jesus Christ. Yep. And because we have the victory in Jesus Christ, we have the victory now, tomorrow, and forever. Right. If we'll claim it. Yep. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, that means die, but we uh, shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Yeah. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast. That means faithful. Mm -hmm. Unmovable. Amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, in Amen. the Lord. Amen. Why? Because He has given us the victory. Amen. Amen. So whether we wake or sleep, we are to live together with Him. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank You this morning for Your Word. We just pray that You would use it in our hearts. Lord, that You would strengthen us, exhort us, and edify us. Lord, that we might, our faith might be strengthened in Your Word today. Lord, that we might have good courage, Lord, to live for you and to give our lives a living sacrifice. Lord, that you might use us and mold us and make us to the image of your Son, to be vessels of mercy and honor, and to be ministers and ambassadors for Christ. And Lord, if there's one here today that has not accepted Jesus as their Savior, we pray that they would call upon Him today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.